Imagine it's your first day after 12th grade and you have to plan a 40 year road trip. Now this map is your life. You could take this route, the national highway. It's safe, it's predictable, it will get you to a decent city. This is the BTEC route. Or you could take this scenic route. It's beautiful, full of learnings, but some roads are unpaved and you are not entirely sure where you will end up. This is the BSC route. And then there is this path. It requires special vehicle. It's challenging, but it leads to places no one has ever seen before. This is the BSMS route. So choosing your degree is like setting the GPS for the next 40 years of your career. One of these paths lead to a guaranteed job. Another leads to the frontier of human knowledge. And one, if you choose the wrong college, can lead to a dead end. So which route is the s tier path for a science student in India right now? I'm not talking about following your passion. I'm talking about a brutal practical analysis of where these roads actually lead. Based on thousands of students we have guided at Siestra, today we are building the ultimate roadmap, the official science degree tile list. We understand that everyone gives advice, but no one really explains the difference properly. And that's literally why we started Siestra. We are students just like you, confused between same three parts. So we built a community of real researchers, scientists, and graduates from top institutes of India to help students figure out which path fits them best. That's what we do in our Kalam batch. More about this towards the end of the video. So today, I'm breaking down these degrees brutally and honestly on three things. Job prospectors, research opportunities, and future proofing. Since we have tracked hundreds of graduates from DU to IIT to IZERTS and top research institutes of India, the truth might surprise you. Let's start from the bottom. This is the C tier. We call this the trap. I'm talking about the general BSc from random local or private colleges where there are no proper labs, no research, and outdated syllabus just to get some attendance and marks. Job prospectors, two out of five. Let's be honest, they are bad. You're not competing with scientists, you're competing with everyone out there. BCom, BA, BCA, for the same three to four lakh per annum support jobs. Research, two out of five, almost none. No projects, no mentorship, no publications. You just get a degree, not a direction. Future proofing, two out of five. Unless you immediately follow it up with MSc, MCA or MBA, you are stuck. That is why it's three out of five. Not because you don't grow, but because it does not prepare you for the future. Now the B tier, the B tech with non-computer science degrees such as mechanical, civil and chemical. Job prospectus, five out of five. Placements sometimes are very solid from top institutes uh, because there are core companies to recruit like PSUs consisting of ONGC and there are government agencies like ISRO, DRDO with salaries 10 to 15 lakh per annum. Your parents will proudly tell everyone, my son is an engineer. Research, three out of five. So here's the thing, you're not doing fundamental science. You're just applying that fundamentally built science in your job because you don't ask, why does this particle behave like that? You ask, how can I use it to make this engine better, right? So future proofing, four out of five. Stable, but limited. A mechanical engineer cannot easily jump to artificial intelligence or biotech. So you are tied to your core industry. So yeah, four out of five. You will earn well, but somewhere deep down, you might always wonder, what if I had gone deeper into science? That is why we call this the golden handcuffs. Now we are at A tier. We call them the specialist. These are the sharp shooters who are brilliant in one area. So two degrees rule this tier actually. Premium BSc, honors of course, and BTEC in computer science, AI or data science related areas. So let's start with BSc honors from um, top colleges like St. Stephen's, Hindu, Loyola or St. Xavier's where job prospectus is four out of five. So most people don't go for research directly. They actually pivot into data science, finance, consulting uh, in companies like McKinsey, BCG, Goldman Sachs because their analytical thinking is really good. That's why research five out of five, excellent. Strong faculty, good labs, and international PhD opportunities at various places across the world. Now, BTEC in computer science and AI. This is the king of placements. So job prospectus is six out of five. 
ranging from 30 lakh LPA, 50 LPA, even 1 crore packages from firms like Google, Microsoft, Amazon. If you are here for financial growth, pick these routes. So research is 5 out of 5. This segment is strong in AI, quantum, robotics, but applied science, not fundamentals. You are building tools to use that science, not discovering science, right? So 5 out of 5, the specialist. They are brilliant, respected, well-paid, but specialized. They either become the academic genius or the tech wizard. And that brings us to the S tier category, who are the innovators. Let's say uh, the BS MS dual degree from top research institutes of India, such as IC, ISERS, NISER, IACS, ISI, CMI. They don't just provide a degree, they provide a system built for scientists where you don't just study science, you do science. Start with job prospectus. 3.5 out of 5 because here's the secret. Although BSMS graduates are uh, not just PhD bound, they are also trained in coding, data science, research, and uh, they are picked by fintech, R&D, data science industries, but most of them deliberately don't go there, right? Even though a physics major knows Python, a biology major knows bioinformatics, so of course, they have strength and capability to go to academy or industry by their choice, but most of them don't do to pursue their passion for research. That's why research is 6 out of 5. Next level, there is government stipend, mandatory research projects, full master's thesis, right? You publish papers, you do internships abroad, and actually contribute to science even before graduating. So future proofing is 5 out of 5. Artificial intelligence might replace coders, but not scientists who understand how AI works. Makes sense. BSMS graduates are trained in both the why and the how. And they're not just ready for the future, they are building it, right? A BTEC creates an engineer. A BSc creates an academic. But a BSMS from elite institutes of India creates an innovator. And if that's the kind of person you want to become, that's exactly what we help you do at Syastra. Through our Kalam batch, we guide students preparing for all top research institutes of India via exams like IAT, NEST, J, and NEET. By the way, this is not just to crack exams, but to build the mindset of a true scientist. So here's the final scorecard. C tier, the trap, for a general BSc, where there is no exposure. B tier, the golden handcuffs. B tech degrees in non-computer science backgrounds. A tier, the specialist. BSc honors from top colleges or B tech in computer science and AI. S tiers, the innovators. BSMS or B tech degrees from ISERS, ISC and NISER. Guys, this is not just a ranking. It's a roadmap. The future of India will not be built by people who only use science. It will be built by people who understand it and create from it. If you are serious about becoming that person, check out description for the link of Kalam Batch at Syastra. We are not just guiding you for an exam, we are helping you for a lifetime of science and innovation. So, what do you think? Should B-Tech Computer Science also be S tier? Or uh, does BSMS still deserve the top spot? Tell me in the comments. I'll be reading each and every one. And if you're ready to start your STR journey, you already know what to do. Subscribe and welcome to Syastra. See you in the next video.